Hi, uh, I'm Elsa Sanset. I'm a stroke neurologist from Oslo University Hospital, and today I'm interviewing Tom Mullally from Edinburgh on his uh, individual patient data meta-analysis, combining uh, the trials INTERACT2 and ATAC2. So Tom, tell me a bit about yourself first. So Elsa, I'm a clinical research fellow at the Centre for Clinical Brain Sciences at the University of Edinburgh and I've had the pleasure to collaborate with the team at the George Institute for Global Health in Australia and the Medical University of South Carolina on these analyses that you described. Can you first tell me a bit about uh, the results? Um, so to, to give you a summary, we pooled in individual participant data from nearly 4,000 patients from INTERACT2 and ATAC2, and these were randomized control trials that tested effects of, of systolic blood pressure reduction in acute ICH and we analysed associations of levels of control in the first 24 hours on a range of clinical and, and safety outcomes. The primary outcome was improved function at 90 days. And we showed that achieving and sustaining lower systolic blood pressure levels, as low as 120 to 130 millimetres of mercury, was associated with a range of favourable outcomes after ICH, including improved function at 90 days. We looked at the magnitude of reduction um, so baseline systolic blood pressure, um, take away the lowest measure in the first hour um, to assess whether steep drops in blood pressure early was important and the results were inconsistent. Um, so in summary, our findings suggest that achieving early, um, lower stable levels of blood pressure um, may be beneficial in ICH. So when we translate this to clinic practice uh, in ICH patients, how do you think we should treat our ICH patients? So I think these data provide support to clinicians. Um, current international guidelines, including those from the European Stroke Organization, advocate systolic blood pressure reduction in acute ICH to levels less than 140 millimeters of mercury in selected patients that um, are in some way similar to those from the major trials that reported um, their findings. And I think these data provide additional support to clinicians when they do that, suggesting that achieving lower average levels over that 24-hour period, again as low as 120 to 130 millimetres of mercury, and really uh, minimising big fluctuations in blood pressure as well, variability um, might be important in these patients. So we all know it's a bit difficult to actually achieve blood pressure reduction in, in uh, patients with uh, ICH. It's quite often quite treatment resistant. Yeah, Do you think we should treat all patients with ICH the same or are there differences according to subgroups, do you think? Or are, are there any patients we should be cautious when we treat? I think that's a really important question and clearly it's, it's, this is a complex issue and it's not one size fits all for blood pressure reduction. I suppose what we can talk about is our analyses and what they show and the population that we looked at, 4,000 participants from randomised control trials, um, tended to be ICH of mild to moderate severity. Um, so we might be able to apply these data to those patients, but the trials didn't include poor prognosis cases of ICH, so those with um, early clinical deterioration, expected death. Uh, those who required imminent neurosurgery. So I think we've got to take care when we apply our findings to that, um, that patient group. Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, thank you. For, it, you've done a tremendous job. And congratulations to you and your whole team of people behind you. And uh, good luck. Pleasure, Elsa. Thank you.